Well, good morning and welcome back to Musings of a Texas Preacher Man. I'm Scott Fisher and I'm glad you've chosen to study with me this morning. In studying the New Testament, a shocking thing is going on. From the crucifixion in 30 AD until the destruction of Jerusalem in the temple in 70 AD, Jewish believers in Jesus as the promised Messiah are continuing the practice of Old Covenant ritual, and many of them believe that doing so was necessary for salvation. Now, this becomes a major theme, a source of controversy in the writings of the New Testament, and a source of persecution for those who disagreed during this transition period from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. That's an important issue. Jesus inaugurated the New Covenant through his ministry, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. As Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, Jesus was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. On the night before his crucifixion, Jesus shared in the Passover meal with his disciples, and it has also been called the Last Supper and the institution of communion or the Lord's Supper. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 27 and 28, he said to the disciples, when he had taken the cup and given thanks and he gave it to them, he said, quote, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. So clearly, according to the words of Jesus, this new covenant, which is associated with the forgiveness of sin, is inaugurated through the shedding of his blood, what he calls, quote, my blood of the covenant. Now, I grew up in the home of an evangelical pastor. My dad was a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching pastor. But practically all of my life, not from him, but from many others, I heard the phrase, we are New Testament Christians as if nothing from the Old Testament applies to us. But nothing could be further from the truth. Jesus said that he did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. And he continues in the very next verse, For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. So here's the dilemma. Does the law, also known as the Mosaic Covenant or the Old Covenant, does it still stand today? Do the Old Covenant and the New Covenant exist side by side today? And if not... When was the Old Covenant fulfilled? And when did the New Covenant supplant it? Now let's take the statement of Jesus that we just read from Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. Until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. So here's the question for you. Have heaven and earth passed away? If not, the law, the old covenant, still stands. Now Jesus uses this same phrase regarding the passing of heaven and earth in the Olivet Discourse found in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. <clears throat> the Olivet Discourse is Jesus' prophecy concerning the coming destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. The discourse begins with the disciples marveling over the beauty of the temple complex, and Jesus responds by saying, Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. Now, there's no debate on the subject. It is, it is this coming destruction of Jerusalem and the temple that he's talking about and that Scripture calls the end of the age, meaning 
the end of the old covenant era. He's not talking about the end of the planet or the end of the world as we know it. He's talking about the end of their old covenantal system, the temple, the sacrificial system, the priesthood, the genealogical records, the ritual of circumcision, the ceremonial washings, all of it. And beginning in verse 33 of Matthew 24, here's how Jesus describes it. Quote, so you too, when you see all these things, and I'm emphasizing the word you because he's speaking to a specific group of people at a specific time about a specific subject that they were going to see. When you too, you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near, he is right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Now, futurists take the position that Jesus was speaking of the end of the world as we know it at some point in our future. Those words of Jesus that heaven and earth was pass away have always bothered me. Why would, why would heaven have to pass away? And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that the meek would inherit the earth. Why would he promise an inheritance to the meek that was going to eventually be destroyed? That one's always bothered me as well. So what could Jesus possibly have meant by heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away? Now remember, this statement comes in the middle of his prof prophetic declaration of the coming destruction of Jerusalem and the temple that would take place in 70 AD. It wasn't until I heard a few years ago that Josephus, in his first century history of the antiquities of the Jews and the wars of the Jews, stated that the Jews referred to the temple and the temple complex as heaven and earth. Well, with that understanding and the placement of Jesus' comments in the Olivet Discourse, it now makes sense. Jesus was stating in language that the first century Jews would understand that their temple, heaven and earth, was going to pass away, but his word would stand forever. In other words, they could take his promise of the impending destruction of Jerusalem and the temple to the bank. It was going to happen, and it did in 70 A.D. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, what is known as the apocalyptic song of Moses, in which Moses declares the future destruction of Israel in the last days or in, in, their, in, in their latter days, he opens it with the following words in verse 1. Give ear, O heavens, and let me speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. The prophecy is being directed to Israel. Heaven and earth was language associated with their old covenantal system. And in the Olivet Discourse, Jesus is prophesying of the same event that Moses did in Deuteronomy 32, the destruction of Jerusalem and their temple, the end of the age, the fulfillment of, of all that is written. Now in Luke's version of the Olivet Discourse, he wrote in Luke 21, beginning at verse 20, But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst of the city must leave, and those who are in the country must not enter the city. Because these are days of vengeance, now look at this, so that all things which are written will be fulfilled. 
Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress upon the land and wrath to this people. The fulfillment of all things which are written would not occur until the destruction of Jerusalem that Jesus declared would occur in the lifetime of some of his listeners. This generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. We know from historical fact that Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed by the surrounding Roman army in the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The old covenantal system would stand until then. For the 40 years from the crucifixion to the 70 AD destruction, the old covenant was passing away and its former glory was being superseded by the glory of the new covenant. And that new covenant is synonymous with the kingdom, the heavenly Jerusalem, the messianic kingdom, Zion, all of those symbolic names for the same thing. Well, I know we've covered a lot of ground this morning, once again, and if what I'm sharing with you goes against what you've always believed, don't be afraid or intimidated. Let the scriptures be your source. And we'll be picking it up right here again tomorrow morning. I want to thank you for joining me this morning for Musings of a Texas Preacher Man. And I hope you'll continue to join me Tuesday mornings through Friday mornings each week right here as we discuss continue to discover the truth of the Messianic Kingdom. Why not click on the subscribe button on the lower right corner of your screen and you'll be notified in YouTube whenever a new video gets posted. And if you're watching on Facebook, consider sharing this on your wall and invite your friends to watch it. And if you saw it on Twitter, retweet it and encourage your friends to watch. And if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, why not join me on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. for Wednesday Nights in the Word. Hey, I hope you'll go out and make today a great day.